Most of the people up here haven't heard of me. I'm only famous on some small thing called the internet. That is not how you do air quotes. But I'm not surprised that someone who's already been accused of lifting jokes doesn't know how to quote properly. You know, but y'all are like famous, famous. Like, Charles, you were so convincing as Uncle Fester in the Adams Family. Not even close. If I wanted someone to throw a punch at Charles Barkley and miss completely, I'd tell Shaq to foul him. And, and Ernie Johnson, you were great as the scary ventriloquist dummy in Toy Story 4. Better, but not very self-aware. She's Canadian, but frequently says y'all. She can't call someone else a ventriloquist dummy when she doesn't even have a voice of her own. No, and Shaq! As far as I know, Shaq's never done any acting. If Superwoman is an acting credit, then The Man of Steel is one as well. The difference is that Shaq has real-life powers on the court, while Singh only has make-believe powers on Twitter. Dwayne and Gabrielle Union have a wonderful marriage. He's like the Ken to her Barbie. And by that, I mean that she's the only one working. And another Wade gets emasculated. Regardless, Dwayne has been working on his documentary, and Ken has had more jobs than Johnny Sins, so the lazy husband stereotype doesn't reflect reality. Maybe the shit she spews will land if she pretends that the folks on stage are a stretch of road. I just came out as bisexual last year. And already I've pleasured more women than Jeff Ross. Nice, the I get more pussy than you insult. Her comedy writers take jokes from Xbox Live. I googled it, fam. <laughs> hey, Jay, Jay Farrell's a cover, Jay. Mm -hmm. Check this out. He's an actor, impressionist, and singer. He's a triple threat to his family's future. If only she googled his fam, because he's single, he doesn't have any kids, and his relatives have their own jobs. What family is he threatening? But the fact that her jokes don't make any sense doesn't matter. The only reason you don't think she's funny is because she's a gay brown woman. And now onto the main event! Huge, huge Kenny Smith fan! Wait, which one of y'all is Kenny Smith again? Playing dumb can work as a joke, but she already identified Shaq, Charles, and Ernie, so she'd be mistaking them for Kenny less than two minutes later. Her brain's smooth, but it's not that smooth. <laughs> Kenny is known as Kenny the Jet. Though he should be called Kenny the Jet Blue since he's always been a discount option. Discount Aziz Ansari is dying up there. There's Ernie, you know. You know, Ernie, I won two Teen Choice Awards. And he was voted most likely to never have actually been a teen. She was voted most likely to get her own late night show without actually being a comedian. So what's wrong with skipping phases? <laughs> I'm be real. I've always had a bit of a crush on Shaq. Oh, no, sorry, I said that wrong. I've always lived in fear of being crushed by Shaq. <laughs> I mean, y'all, every chair Shaq sits in becomes a beanbag chair. She's friends with Tess Holliday, who turns beanbag chairs into yoga mats, so she's having nightmares about the wrong person crushing her. My parents are immigrants from India. We know. And they wanted me to pass this message to Shaq. Learn to speak English or go back to where you came from. That is not how her mom talks. She keeps reminding people that she's Indian, but forgot how to sound like one. Here's my advice to Lily Singh. If you can't tell funny jokes for people over the age of 10, and instead incessantly mention how brown and gay you are like those are accomplishments, then get off the stage. She claims to be colorblind, but talks nonstop about color. She wants to be relatable, but alienates dudes and whites by pretending like they're out to get her. She lives in an echo chamber, so nobody told her that she can't worship her cow and eat it too. She claims that having her own show makes her a threat, but she's more like a car alarm. Loud and obnoxious, but easy to ignore. If we're lucky, her show won't be renewed, and her superpower in 2020 will be invisibility. His parents are probably using the kitchen, so he'll make that shake in this room on the only other black leather couch I know of where there's no job waiting for the loser who's getting humiliated on it. Raw eggs. I like mine's raw. It depends on you, okay? Maybe you want to compromise your immune system during a lockdown, and maybe you never want to do that. It depends on you. It's too bad he didn't get into the pros and cons of cooked versus raw eggs in a smoothie. Maybe he'll do that the fifth time he makes it. And I'm gonna take two spoons, two spoons of 
all of the mulberries. You'd think that growing up in a house full of decorative plates and drinking glasses would teach Tyrone the finer points of dining, but no. That peasant doesn't even know what a tablespoon is. So I'm gonna take three also of the dates, okay? He's not even close to hitting 50 grams of protein. If only his resume had as much filler as his recipe. And now, I'm gonna put my walnuts. I like to do my homemade protein shakers cause I know what I'm putting in. I know there's no chemicals in it. Everything in that shake is made of chemicals. From the food to the endotoxins that the bacteria your dumbass introduced leave behind when they die. Nuts, dried cherries. When Tyrone arm checks a girl at the mall and tells her he lives with his mom, the area around the cherry dries up too. So everything you see me taking is two spoons, okay? Two spoons. You know what? Let me, let me make it three. If, if you ain't shredded, you can't talk to me. No amount of leanness will change the fact that this 50 gram protein shake only has about 30 grams of protein in it. Two scoops of whey have about 50 grams of protein and cost much less of Tyrone's parents' hard-earned money than these ingredients do. Most of the calories in this shake come from fat. The macro ratios are way off, but at least the like-dislike ratio is spot on. It's working for me. My chest is on deck. My abs look great. That is the face of a guy who doesn't think his abs look that great. Tyrone should take his own advice and stop talking to himself, because he couldn't complete a 60-day transformation in five months. Tyrone's body is starting to look as smooth as his brain. That's what I call a mind-muscle connection. If you guys like your smoothie a, a bit watery, then add more water. Once the salmonella kicks in, it'll be watery coming out, whether or not it was watery going in. That's my shake. That's my protein shake. This is what I'm going to have before I head to the gym, okay? So now, let me blend it up. Yes, pad your garbage video by repeating yourself and keeping the dead time in. You need that ad revenue. Gold pendants are expensive, but that one isn't. When Tyrone wears that last supper piece, it's the only time someone else's meal is on him, because Lord knows he can't multiply any bread. Good luck working off about a thousand calories running a brainlit program and spending the rest of the day sitting around not applying for jobs. The only bums who could bring themselves to burn that much food during lockdown are in Minneapolis. People when they make their shakes, they taste the egg, and a lot of people don't like the taste. But I can't even taste anything. To be honest, I can't. Let us know if you can't taste anything else. We're concerned. Really, we are. I can definitely finish this on camera, to be honest. There's no way he didn't throw up afterwards. If I wanted to make a sickening tub of fat shake that I'd regret right away, I'd invite Lizzo to dance. For a lot of people, 2020 has been a bad year. But when you're Tyrone the fitness addict, every year is a bad year. I've been roasting him since 2018, and instead of getting a job, he's still a laughing stock, LARPing as a fitness expert. When the economy reopens and most of us return to work or school, Tyrone will continue to stay home and stay shredded of dignity. On June 6, the Institute for Health Metrics and Education tweeted, Racism and discrimination are critical public health issues that demand an urgent response, to which Glassman replied, it's Floyd 19. Days later, his comment section is still getting hammered. Nobody enjoys seeing Glassman fail more than I do, but for all the backlash he got, I expected him to post something much worse than a cryptic dad joke. The next day he said, your failed model quarantined us and now you're going to model a solution to racism? George Floyd's brutal murder sparked riots nationally. Quarantine alone is accompanied in every age and under all political regimes by an undercurrent of suspicion, distrust, and riots. Thanks. Glassman hasn't participated in any riots, but he's definitely destroyed his own community. If Glassman really wanted to criticize COVID-19 models, then he should have made an argument instead of a name flip. His disagreement would have looked reasonable instead of like a cheap shot. Then again, I wouldn't have expected a better model from a businessman who couldn't forecast the death of his own brand. He wasn't even taken by surprise, because CrossFit was losing affiliates before the Twitter storm that caused it to lose sponsors. On June 5, a former affiliate owner of 9 years posted an email that she sent on June 3 to CrossFit's chief advisor, who really needs to consider a new line of work. The main takeaways from the over 15,000 word email were that she wasn't going to renew her licensing agreement, and that CrossFit's silence on BLM and Floyd's death unnerved her. Glassman replied that he thinks quarantine has severely affected her mental health, that the company is not racist, and that he's ashamed of her. 
Since the email went up on a blog, other affiliates abandoned ship as well. Official statements in support of social causes are perfunctory and unconvincing anyway. The statement he tweeted next was no different. In true CrossFit form, Glassman failed miserably to maintain his backing and buckled under the pressure, so he issued an apology, on the company's Twitter account instead of his own. He claimed that he doesn't stand for racism, but he sure didn't act that way during a Zoom call that he had with some affiliate owners and staff members. He apologized for his pun and claimed that he'd be there for the community, unless you're an affiliate asking him to be there for the community. Whatever chance he had of being based disappeared when he backpedaled. Still, I think it's ridiculous when people, even the ones I dislike, lose business or work opportunities because others disagree with their opinions. But Glassman isn't exactly a beacon of free speech. After all, he tried to cancel my channel in 2014 by having his lawyer file copyright strikes against it, all because he didn't like my opinions. Alienating your business partners is an example of bad leadership. CrossFit's affiliates and sponsors took their business elsewhere when they no longer had faith in that leadership. Finally, he has succumbed to public pressure and jeopardized someone's career over internet comments before. In 2018, he had one of his spin doctors fired for supporting a CrossFit box that refused to hold a gay pride event and for stating how it went against his religious beliefs. An internet mob wanted the guy, whom I also can't stand, booted from the company, and Glassman and the other powers that be complied. You can't really frame him as the victim of companies bending to the mob when he let a longtime employee go because a mob resented his edgy tweets. To anyone who wants to join the CrossFit community, you'll have a new incompetent leader to deal with because Glassman just resigned. It was enough to make me smile on a Zoom call that I hope nobody ever leaks. If you do something stupid on the internet, you'll pay the piper. But if your stupidity is bad for business, the payer will pipe you. Athlean deadlift claims have been the talk of the town lately. Almost five years ago, he pulled 495 beltless with a neutral spine for an easy double. Now, when he pulls 425 in a belt for a single, Cavalier's catback appears. He also didn't use much leg drive and let the bar drift in front of him, even in his later warm-up sets, so it's obvious that he's inexperienced at the lift. He threw down the weight and mean-mugged the camera, but many of us aren't fooled by his theatrics. I haven't seen a Cavalier flop this badly since LeBron was still in Ohio. Catlin X practically lives in the gym, so he of all people would be able to maintain his strength. Jeff probably thought that this lift would shut the haters up, but all it did was confirm that the weights he used before were Fugazi. If you didn't know any better and watched his so-called five-plate pull, you'd think the X in his name stood for extraordinary. But once you see him pull just over four real plates, the X stands for doubt. A lot of people are having fun roasting Jeff for his behavior, but some are overreacting. Jeff didn't cheat. He had an entanglement with plastic plates, then got back with his real weights. That defense, like his plates, isn't ironclad, but it's not much worse than his redemption rep, and before that, his offer to pee in a cup to prove his natty status, like he hasn't been caught with his dick in his hands enough as it is. In 2018, everybody trolled V-Shred for his shady practices and poor lifting form, while nobody trolled Jeff. Now, nobody trolls V-Shred, and everybody's trolling Jeff for his shady practices and poor lifting form. When Athlean X notes the importance of fixing imbalances, this is not what he means. For better or for worse, a skinny know-it-all whose legs don't work is the king of YouTube fitness, also Westeros. All the tabloid YouTubers can't topple him with their name drop spam when he ranks so highly for so many fitness keywords. It would be like killing Poseidon with a water pistol. No matter how much Lord Cavalier of Castleberry upsets you, it's really lame to cancel anyone. Besides, Jeff has helped plenty of lifters over the years. If his fake weights redemption arc never comes, then the main lesson from Athlean X is that if you want to look like an athlete, you have to feign like an athlete. Step right up here for the greatest show on earth, the washed up Loser Olympics 2020. CrossFit's trying to keep its competitive exercises from getting sick, but has done nothing about the bad calls and stupid events that plague it every year. When you no longer have to cover your face, you can count on CrossFit to keep masquerading as a real sport. And for me to cover the farce because I'm Asian reporter and returning champion Elgin Tensity, aka Trapsashi Lamamoto. And they're off. Noah Olsen is taking huge chunks of rest in between the jerks and the bar muscles, where Medeiros is not doing it much. I'm gonna talk about Matt Fraser's in the center part of your screen. Olsen has been to the games before. He should know how to pace himself. 
His plan to show us what he's got went up in flames in California. It's like watching a gender reveal party. All he secured at this event were his top knot and last place. By the way, Matt Fraser's time of 13.07, that was the winning time for Brett Marshall. The bar has to be locked out over the middle of the body with the feet in line. Instead, she bent under the pressure like Glassman facing the outrage mob. We now move to the corn sack sprint. There's no better way to trivialize CrossFit's crusade against Big Soda than by having the competitors haul bags of what's ostensibly the ingredient that keeps Big Soda in business. Olsen will take third, and Adler... And that would be the other cut that makes him look like a loser. He wanted to be David Hasselhoff for Halloween so much that he even ran in slow motion like him. In an era of mostly peaceful riots, we have mostly walking hill sprints. She's really struggling to pick up that corn sack. I haven't seen millennials fumble this much with a crop since the Chaz, which was about as fleeting and unproductive as Dave Castro's run as the CEO. Well, it just shows about the next week. Yeah, it just shows how much power she has. Here's last year's champion representing Australia, which is why if you look down under, you'll see boomerangs. Hey, I tell you what, if you tell me to clap my knees together and I'll get a 325-pound back squat, I'll sign up for that right now. Smack those knees together all day long. You heard that right. The average CrossFit dude would dance to Charleston just to squat 325. You might be thinking, wait, it's all mediocrity? Always has been. She might get away with it, but rising from the hole like that can cost you your knees, which brings new meaning to out-of-pocket expenses. There's no audience at the games this year, but her knees clapped so much that she was still getting a round of applause. You can see her drop slightly before the press to gain momentum, which isn't allowed. She was using questionable methods to prove her strength and expected nobody to notice. Who does she think she is, Jeff Cavalier? Wow, look at that! Katrine X and the judge thought she just took a stutter step each time, but she was actually traveling. Wow, there was a lot of fight going on there. Either she can't count to three, or she really just tried to finesse an extra attempt with a thousand cameras aimed at her. That feel when her wheels didn't rise overhead or turn in her head. So you have the full 45 seconds. If you need to re-rack or whatever, are they going to let her do it? No. So she's going to get 127. Imagine being clueless about such an old event. CrossFit claims to prepare people for the unknown and the unknowable, but it can't get them to remember a four-page PDF from 2006. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so very tight. You see her get, everything's engaged. She gets right up past the knees. She's hanging out there, trying to get those hips. You see her inching up. There's the lockout, shoulders behind the bar. What a surprise. CrossFit still hasn't flattened the curve. Until then, this well's dwindling liquid resource is the fluid in her discs. Too bad her glutes can't extend her hips as well as they extend her Instagram reach. How is my face burning and I actually have a chill? <laughs> it's like, I'm so confused. <laughs> So <laughs> when it comes to recording gaffes, it's better to be hot and cold than it is to be hot and bothered. Then again, we're watching people work out just so they can call themselves the fittest on earth, so we're still being exposed to masturbatory exercises. If Glassman had a team to check his tweets for potential disasters, then he might still have his company. By the way, that demo guy was one of the first to back out of the games over those tweets, which means this isn't the first time CrossFit made him perform an uncomfortable split. That rig first. Get to those kettlebells and move. The games didn't even need a fencing event for lunges to cause pierce damage. But it was really incredible how Tia was just very calm. Let her make that move. Crossfitters can barely lift on dry platforms, let alone dew-covered grass. At the CrossFit Games, drops spread you. The two reigning champs are guaranteed first place going into the finale. Nobody else's experience of aromas will include the smell of victory. Final event of the 2020 Reebok CrossFit Games, and just to sum up, one mile run, 100 handstand push-ups, 200 pistols, 300 pull-ups, and then a final one mile run. 300 kipping pull-ups. Soon they'll have to remember to leave the house with their face masks and fresh gauze. You do not want movement of your palm on that bar. Haley Adams looks like she might have a little blood on her hands right now. Imagine being a games competitor and not knowing how to cheat at pull-ups. Then again, you can be a presidential candidate and not know how to form a sentence, so anything is possible when you put what's left of your mind to it. And Haley Adams is just, you can see both of her hands now look like... Yeah, it looks like both it looks hands. Like it, it's hard to tell if that's the grip or the tape, but there's, it looks like there's red on both grips. 
It took a lot of grit for her to finish the event, but a much lower grit to finish her hands. Well, and Wells looks like she has a sizable amount of blood smeared on her shorts. I mean, we heard that from the demo team. Yep. I mean, no one was left unscathed yep. testing this event, and it's bound to happen. This isn't unfamiliar. Maybe if you're seeing it for the first time, it might seem like a murder scene running down the last mile, but this is just kind of par for the course. It happens in events like this sometimes. Par for the course for her would be filming from behind. If I wanted to see a washed up curvy airhead with a bloody handprint, I'd watch Castaway. This final workout was named after a huntress who challenged her suitors to a foot race to decide who'd get her hand in marriage. One guy managed to win by getting the goddess of love to give him golden apples to throw in front of Atalanta and distract her whenever she got too far ahead. While the games took place at the site of the first competition, there's no better way to return to CrossFit's roots than to name the finale after the story of a guy who had to cheat because he sucked at sports. Zero! Every once in a while we make some good friends. So I'd like to dedicate this next one to a good friend of mine, Elgin Moniz, a.k.a. Trappy Davis Jr. Everybody drugs them, but it's sometimes. Everybody tries to get some out. Something in my lips just blow me. My sometimes was now